I'm here with State Representative Justin Jones, uh, and uh, Justin has just made a really quite extraordinary, passionate commencement address. It is our time now, and we're moving forward together, and we're not going one step back. Uh, but I've got some questions for you. I've loaded the questions for you, um, and I'm not going to take much of your time because you have important things to do. Uh, but first of all, uh, you are fairly young, are you not? How did you get? How did you? How did you get into politics? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm 27. I ran when I was 26. So I'm the youngest Democratic and, and youngest Black lawmaker in our state. And I, I came from community organizing. I, I re recognize that our generation um, brings this urgency to our body of politics, brings this moral clarity, um, and that's what's needed in a state, especially like a state like mine in Tennessee, um, to address the crises that we're facing with our economy, with democracy, with this rise in white nationalism, with the with the environment. Um, and so, and that's what led me to run. Well, let me just ask you, you said, uh, and I was quite shocked actually, that when you joined the legislature, you went into the elevator at one point and there was a, uh, a legislator, an older legislator who was there and told you what? Uh, he said, you're, you're worthless. And this is one of my colleagues, um, Senator Jack Johnson. And, and that was, you know, that's the environment. And that's why, you know, I told people- Senator Jack Johnson, if I could yeah. just stop you there, excuse me, Representative. Yeah. He said to you, who you had been newly elected, yeah. you are worthless. Yeah, you don't belong here. That's he's, yep, that's what he said, and he's and again, it was just emblematic of the culture there, the yeah. culture in which people who look like me are not supposed to be welcomed. But as I said in the commencement address, you know, I'm I'm entering into these chambers, I'm entering into the legislature, not to make friends, but to make change, um, the change that our generation is calling for when it, when we see what's going on um, in our communities, and so. Um, that was the welcome we got, or, or unwelcome, um, but we know that really what it is for them, it's fear. It's fear of what we represent as a generation. We represent um, multiracial democracy, something that they're fearful of. Um, this new energy that is, is coming in um, unbowed and unapologetic for what we're, we're, we're asking and demanding for our constituents. And so um, when Senator Jackson told me I was worthless, I was getting on the elevator the first week, um, it was just a reminder that I'm, I'm, I'm in a hostile environment um, that is very threatened by the vision of what we represent. Well, you gave a very optimistic, upbeat uh, sort of uh, speech to the graduate students. Uh, and I, I just wondered if you could tell us where that optimism comes from. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the confrontations mm -hmm. the, the, to democracy, the mm -hmm. challenge of democracy, mm -hmm. uh, the, the challenge of, of, of sort of authoritarianism, uh, the challenge of white supremacy, mm. uh, the challenge, well, we could go through all yeah. of the challenges that you and others in your generation are facing. Yeah. Why are you optimistic? I know for, for myself and many of my, my colleagues and, and, and those who are we're in the movement together that hope is a discipline and hope um, is, is, is birthed every time we resist as we did in Nashville. You know, we had thousands of young people and parents and teachers take to our state capitol. And it was such a powerful show of, of people power that the Republican supermajority ended session early. Um, and so their reactions, their overreactions gives me hope when they tried to expel us. And three days later, I marched back with thousands of Tennesseans to the state capitol um, after being reappointed by the city council unanimously. That gave me hope. Um, what gives me hope is the saying in the South that a dying meal kicks the hardest. So they're fighting us so hard at this time because they realize that their power and their systems are dying. And so this rebirth, this, this, this resurgence of a movement led by young people gives me hope. And this, this, this connection that we have with each other gives me hope. Um, and this recognition that you know we are on the right side of history. That's what gives me hope. Well, you are on the right side of history. Uh, and that gives me hope too, <laughs> that you are out there. And that generation that you represent is out there. Uh, one final question though. When you talk to those graduate students or the soon to graduate students, you also said something that I found particularly moving about how much strength it takes for you and mm -hmm. others, that is, to be up against the forces you're up against mm -hmm. continuously. The only thing that has sustained me is community. The only thing that will sustain us is community. The opposite of oppression is community. Uh, maybe you could just talk a little bit about that. Um, I, I, it was moving to me because I just, I felt it. Mm. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's just, a truth that we have to lift up in this time. We are fighting systems that are trying to break us, that are trying to diminish us and trying to um, harm us in mentally, physically, spiritually. Um, and it does take a toll. And there are no superheroes in this world. You know, we are 
um, we're acting um, as community, but but it definitely is um, something that we have to be cognizant of. Is that we um, that there that we must you know be vulnerable sometimes and be honest about the toll that this takes. Um, so people realize that you don't have to be um, beyond human. You don't have to be you know outside of any type of norm to, to do this work. But it requires all of us as everyday people, you know, to to, to lift up. Um, the demands that we're making when it comes to our systems of, of policy and structures. And so um, I think that's something I've just been very open about is that, you know, we have to be authentic about mental health and, and talk about that. And, and I think that's something that our generation of, of movement activists is bringing. You know, I don't think we, we talked a lot about the toll that the civil rights movement, these, these movements, the anti-Vietnam war protests, I don't think we talked a lot about the psychological toll of movement. And we have to be honest about that because we want to, part of liberation is being embodied as our whole selves. And it's, and it's about healing justice um, as well as social justice. And so I think that's a part that I've, you know, I, I think that our generation is bringing to the movement and that authenticity um, and honesty. Well, all I can say is that you're an inspiration, Representative Jones. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. Thank you.